Hey, it's Mike here, and today another vegan science roundup where I grab a bunch of studies that don't really need an entire video and I cover them all in one video. And there has been so much vegan related research in this last quarter of 2023. I've done particular videos on studies like that twin study, which had some amazing positive results, that blood testing study out of Germany, etc. And for studies that we're gonna cover today, we have another German blood testing study on vegans, as well as a spontaneous word association study on vegan stuff, which is really interesting, as well as like a kidney disease mortality study, a breast cancer quality of life, whole food, plant-based study. And we have another one estimating the population of vegans in New Zealand. We're gonna jam all these together because Jam is vegan, let's go. Since I know you love blood test studies as much as I do, let's hit on that German study. The previous one did cover K2, showing that vegans had higher status, which was super interesting considering those complaints against a vegan diet that were levied. But this one compared vegans to flexitarians as well as standard meat eaters. And the vegans, once again, did just as well or even better in those areas they're normally criticized for. The iron and the vitamin D levels were the same as people who ate meat. And in terms of B12, the vegans were statistically significantly higher than the flexitarians. Also in terms of that 4C B12 index, which looks at all of the best markers of B12, like methylmalonic acid. And while they trended higher than the other meat eaters, they weren't statistically significantly different from them. But vegans are continuing to kick butt in the B12 area. And then we also have folate levels, which are once again, statistically significantly higher in the vegan population, which is huge. And then we have magnesium the vegans had higher magnesium intake than the omnivores, which was statistically significant. And magnesium gets so much hype nowadays. Keep hearing like the whole population is deficient in magnesium. So I might have to do a video on magnesium. If you want one, let me know down below. And this is the first study that I've seen that they've looked at the parathyroid hormone level. And while the vegans were statistically significantly higher than the other groups by about seven points, they were both hanging right there in the middle of the normal range. So not much can be said. Other than that, the vegans don't appear to have a problem in that area as well. Anyway, moving on. I recently did a whole video on anti-vegan research. And while this isn't on anti-vegan specifically, it's kind of along that same vein. And this is a spontaneous word association study, which is just such a funny image to me. You know, they have people essentially respond, react to the term vegan or vegetarian or meat eater with words. And then they would rate those words as positive or negatively. And as you guessed it, yeah, vegans were viewed about three times as negatively as vegetarians, for example. And then of course, like four times as bad as meat eaters viewing themselves. The official negativity scores were 22.4, 7.1, one and about five. The researchers say because vegan dietary habits, attitudes, and beliefs challenge traditional societal norms, they may threaten others who do not hold similar views. And then vegans might experience disrespect, derogation, and stigmatization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And thankfully, these researchers were really open and actually provided footage from the original study here. Subject 32. What words come to mind when I say the term vegans? Stupid. Idiot. Dumb. My ego shrinking, my biceps receding, must buy F-350 turbo diesel, must barbecue. We also have footage to the upcoming sequel study where they are asked to interpretive dance in response to the term vegan. Squawk. Is, is that Squawk. you twisting a bird's neck, sir? Okay, enough of that. Now let's get on to a pretty important study. This is a randomized control trial, although it's not huge. It had 20 people go on a whole food plant-based diet who had breast cancer. And the question is, how does it affect quality of life, emotional well-being, et cetera? And I will say on PubMed, you see a warning that this is a preprint. However, they say they give access to it because it is NIH funded. Of course, it has to go through certain standards. So they're okay with that. And the study did supply some meals with a meal service. And so it's no surprise that they had a 94% adherence rate, which is pretty great. But most important, we have a ton of statistically significant score improvements in this whole 
whole food plant-based group. First of all, we have perceived cognitive function scores going up, which I think is really interesting. And this is using a system called Fact Cog, which had survey questions like, how much do you agree with? I am able to remember where I put my wallet and keys, or I am able to concentrate. Plant-based group was 16 points higher on a scale from like zero to 148, so definitely notable. They also had improvements in physical and emotional well-being, as well as breast cancer specific symptom scores improving, which is obviously huge. They say that these improvements surpassed a clinically relevant threshold. So hopefully, you know, see real benefits in real life. And then you might be wondering who did the study? Are they some crazy vegan? Well, this is by Thomas Campbell and his wife. This is Colin Campbell's son. And they say that yes, they do make money off books and they have a lifestyle practice. But I once again need to say this was funded by the NIH. So had to meet more stringent standards for things like that and was a randomized control trial, which helps. Along the same subject, we have this study, which sort of combined the last two. It looked at people who have cancer and are vegan to try and be healthier with cancers. They propose vegan for cancer as a unique identity. Interestingly, people who are vegan for cancer are viewed more positively than people who are vegan for the animals or general health. People are like, I hate vegans, but unless they have cancer, you know, then that's okay. You know, not someone who is trying to lower the risk for getting cancer, screw them. And yes, from this meta-analysis, vegans have 15% lower cancer risk, so valid. Next up, we have a case series out of India. And before we hit it, I should once again mention the hierarchy of evidence. Yeah, that randomized control trial that we just mentioned is much higher than a case series, but it's still worth looking at. Now, the study says they have four people here who were type two diabetic who have gone completely into remission with a vegan diet and lifestyle. Changes, quote, they say their hemoglobin A1C values of all four patients reduced to less than 6.5 without any diabetes medication, and thus they achieved remission as per definition. Remission as per definition. Again, a case series, but it adds to the body of evidence and higher quality evidence, all of it together to show, uh, yeah, that a vegan diet is really good for diabetes. And today's video is sponsored by Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, which is a probiotic and a prebiotic. We're talking about each one of these little guys having 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units from 24 different strains. And we're still talking about seeding through the holidays, keeping your gut nice and balanced through all of those holiday meals. And on that topic, I found a hilarious Dutch study. This one, which used little Christmas designs for things like their timeline was looking at whether or not visiting your in-laws for Christmas affected your gut microbiota composition by doing that RNA analysis. They found that compared to visiting your own family, participants visiting in-laws had a significant decrease in all ruminococcus species known to be associated with psychological stress and depression. Yeah, ruminococcus is a good bacteria that digests resistant starch. So uh, yeah, was it the stress? We don't know. But visiting the in-laws or not, it's good to note that those 24 different strains in seed are scientifically shown to support your overall digestive health, gut immunity, gut barrier integrity, skin health, heart health, and more. Lindy and I are going on three years taking seed now, and Lindy has had so much benefit from it that she's basically converted my whole family now. And if you would like to try it, use the code MIKE25, M-I-C-25, at checkout for 25% off your first month's supply. All right. Next, we have a study out of New Zealand that was just asking how many vegetarians, how many vegans are there? What percent of the population is it? And they looked at adults over 15 years of age and about 24,000 of them. So this was quite large. The results were a really low ball estimate compared to what we've seen so far with vegetarians being 2% and vegans in at less than 1%. And that is definitely lower than the other surveys we've seen, like this one by Statista, which put vegans and vegetarians up at around 19% of the population, which means that we're talking about you know, maybe 5% vegan. How is this so different? Well, that Statista study was 1,000 people, it was 24 less, so that study and their authors say that theirs is actually higher quality than these other ones. But I do have a couple questions, you know, looking optimistically from a vegan perspective. They did what was called area sampling, and I need to look deeper into the methodology. You're welcome to if you want. But it appears that they were really trying to get equal representation from different 
areas, you know, whether they sort of gridded it out or not. But as we know, the vast majority of people live in urban areas, but this could overrepresent rural areas where people are way less likely to be vegetarian or vegan. In New Zealand, we're talking about 4.4 out of 5.1 million people being in urban areas, sort of like how unpopulated states are overrepresented in the US Senate. It's possible that rural places were overrepresented in this, which made vegan levels look lower or negatively it's just more accurate than the other ones that have been done we don't know but accuracy aside we have a interesting trend here which we've seen before and that is that younger people are way more likely to be vegan in particular ages 15 to 24 were over three times as likely to be vegetarian or vegan as people who are over 75 so the future's vegan so what's the conclusion here? I think we can confidently say that the number of vegans in Australia has hit exactly 1%. Yeah, who knows? Anyway, moving on to this next one, which is a food science study, which I would like to cover more of, but I'm not a master in that area or anything. But this one is on mayo consistency, essentially the rheology, which is the study of those properties. They found that quote, we can find that commercially available vegan mayos can emulate the apparent yield stress and sheer thinning of yolk-based mayonnaise, you know, by adding vegan proteins and thickeners. But they did say that the vegan mayos dispensing and dipping properties were significantly different less gooey and stretchy, I guess. And for the wildest sentence I've ever read in an abstract, especially on a Mayo study, quote, the analysis of neck radius evolution of these extension thinning yield stress fluids reveals that even when the power law exponent governing the intermediate pinching dynamics is similar to the exponent obtained from the shear flow curve, the terminal pinching dynamics show strong local effects possibly influenced by interstitial fluid properties, finite drop size and deformations and capillarity. I can't believe I got that in one try, dang. If that's not intellectual mayobation, I don't know what is. Anyway, on to the next, we have this study, which looked at the mortality rate of people with chronic kidney disease based on plant-based diet indices. They found that a high versus low plant-based diet index for those with chronic kidney disease was associated with a 25% lower risk of all-cause mortality, kaboom. Did they point to any reasons? Well, one was dietary acid load. They say, quote, per serving higher in foods, high in dietary acid load, like dairy and eggs, was associated with a greater risk of all-cause mortality, more kidney stress. And they say that individuals with greater adherence to overall and healthy plant-based diets had higher intake of magnesium, which can lead to lower production of inflammatory cytokines and mitigate endothelial artery wall dysfunction. And they also looked at an unhealthy plant-based diet index, which is of course straight up sugar and processed foods. And as you know, that was associated with an increased risk of mortality by about 10%. And you might be wondering, was this done by vegans? Well, it appears to be done by people mainly just connected with pharma, the pharmaceutical industry, and they say in particular that there were no relevant financial interests. Next, we have one that's not quite as exciting, but I think it's important headway, and that is this study on essentially having a vegan nutritional support shake for patients that you know, are nutritionally at risk. This isn't saying, oh, all vegans need to take this. No, this is something that already exists in a non-vegan form for various patients of various diseases. They essentially measured the dietary intake before and after the shake for people from 19 different health centers across the UK. And they just found that with that shake, their nutrient intakes went up and their risk of not getting enough nutrition, of course, went down. They also look at why people would want a vegan shake and they said that about a third was just personal preference, 28% was religious slash cultural, 17 was vegan slash animal related, 17% environmental sustainability, and 5% health reasons. Anyway, that's just good because it shows the medical system adapting to having vegan patients, which is awesome. Anyway, in the end, I always think it's good to look at all this interesting research that would otherwise perhaps slip under the radar, the, the vegan radar, the Vader. Dar no, that's like Darth Vader, that's bad. We might love Satan, but this is not the dark side, okay? Anyway, let me know if you want me to elaborate on any of these studies more. And if you do want a magnesium video, it's kind of been in the back of my head for a little bit, so I think I might crank that out. And of course, if you would like to try Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, feel free to click the link below and use the code Mike25 at checkout for 25% off your first month's supply. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Again, my subscriber rate is so much lower than the YouTube average I've been told. So getting to 400K would be awesome. Anyone that wants to chip into that, much appreciated. And of course, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.